Which of the following histological patho histopathological findings would be would confirm the most likely diagnosis? Um, caseating granulomas, eosinic infiltration, hysocytes with elongated bean-shaped nuclei, non-caseating granulomas, or smooth muscle proliferation. Okay. A 28-year-old female presents to the clinic with a six-month history of non-productive cough, shortness of breath, and fatigue. She has a five-year pack, pack five-pack year smoking history. And physical examination reveals crackles in the upper lungs, fields bilaterally. Pulmonary fun function tests show a mixed restrictive and obstructive pattern. And a chest CT reveals cystic changes in nodules predominantly in the upper lobes. Which of the following is um, histop histopathological findings would confirm the most likely diagnosis? My gut reaction is that this is sarcoidosis. Um, and in sarcoidosis, you have non caseating granulomas. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a little sickness today. Um, that's what I'm leaning towards. I, that's what I'm leaning towards. Uh, okay. I don't think it's eosinophil infiltration or smooth muscle infiltration or histiocytes. Caseating granulomas is only seen with TB and like mycobacterium, like different types of that function. I don't think she has that because usually you see like hemoptysis and like night sweats. Um, and I think she's, I don't know if this is too young to have. I think you can still have COPD, but she's still a little young. So, mm -hmm. I, and she's a female. I think this is more like risk factor wise going along the sarcoidosis. I think it's okay. also you'd find that in the upper lobes as well. And so I'm going to go with this. This will be my final answer. Oh, man. Okay. Let's talk about this a little bit, right? This one's, this one's a tough question, right? Uh, I like your, I like your way of um, working through the question, coming up with the diagnosis and supporting your diagnosis, right? Um, and not working backwards. I think working like that in kind of a linear pattern, figuring out a diagnosis that you're comfortable sticking with and then picking an answer that supports that is the correct way to do this. But mm -hmm. the the hard part about this is it's super rare, right? Lingering cells, histiocytosis, right? Super, super rare. Um, but if you look at kind of the question, it's kind of interesting, right? 28 year old female, right? Six months history. So, you know, it's a chronic thing. She also smokes, but you know, in theory, right? Five years at 28 is pretty young for COPD. You need like years and years, decades of smoking. Pulmonary function test shows mixed restrictive and obstructive. So this is a weird picture already, right? And then CT chest shows cystic changes, nodules predominantly in upper lobes. So this is super, super weird, right? Um, which of the following histopathology would you find? Um, so you know, did I personally remember, you know, Langerhans having kind of um, Langerhans hit cell histiocytosis to have kind of these symptoms with the lung? No, I don't remember most of these, right? Um, the only thing is... I really know with this is that they have like, and again, it's probably bad that I just know this fact, but I, the burbic granules, yep. the tennis racket shaped granules. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so this is a tough one, I would say, even me, right, that, I, you know, this is a very rare diagnosis. So you kind of remember, okay, so what do they have? Okay, so it seems like they have some lung symptoms, right? And of course, right, they'll have, you know, Burbeck granules when they pee, right? Um, but hit, what are histiocytes now that we talk about it by any chance? You know, Histiocytes? Um, yep. Honestly, I really don't know. I, I feel like I would, I don't know. So histiocytes, right, um, they're kind of you know, um, phagocytic cells like macrophages that are in kind of connective tissue, um, that kind of surveillance and kind of part of your immune system. But yeah, so these are kind of, you know, when you're talking about Langerhans, Langerhans cells, histiocytosis, right? Kind of a weirdly production amount of these things causing you a bunch of symptoms, right? So but anyways, just, just so you kind of know, but yeah, this was a tough question. I would say you just kind of learn from it and then kind of so move forward. What yeah. things in this told you, like, I don't know if it told you much, but like, which things in this question would like kind of point you away from sarcoidosis? Yeah. So, so key thing with sarcoidosis, right. The way it's presented is usually right. Eth ethnicity, right. Usually they're going to say, you know, for the most part, African-American, right. And a lot of times people with sarcoidosis will also, they'll give you other risk factors for other autoimmune disorders. So just so you know, autoimmune disorders increase your risk for other autoimmune disorders. So mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll say, you know, maybe they also have SLE, maybe they have rheumatoid arthritis, right? All these, all these other autoimmune disorders, right? Increase your risk for sarcoid. And then sarcoidosis, right? Um, what is, what is the, you know, it is non-casing granulomas, but what do you usually see on chest x -ray? Is it like bilateral infiltrating like nodules 
Yeah, so symmetric hyalur or mediastinal adenopathy, right? Um, so, you know, in sarcoid, they're going to mention kind of these, um, these, these hyalur lymphadenopathies kind of right in the middle of your chest x-ray. So something kind of to look for when you're thinking about sarcoid. Okay. So okay. It, it, the weird thing here is that you're getting kind of pulmonary cystic changes in the lungs, right? Which is super, super weird. Um, but, you know, if you look at kind of this, right, casein granulomas, you're thinking about TB mostly or any kind of fungal, right, is caseating, yes. right? Eosinophil infiltration, you're thinking about, you know, an, an allergic kind of, um, you know, diagnosis, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Like Church Strauss or something like that, right? Non-casing sarcoid is what you're kind of mentioning. Smooth muscle proliferation, that's going to be what? I actually have, that's COPD. Yeah, you can get some COPD here too, right? That's COPD because it overreacts and then asthma too. You can have more smooth muscle mm, because it's yeah. super, super um, um, responsive to allergens, right? So here, you know, looking at something like six exchanges and nodules predominant in the upper lobe in a younger female is super rare. So, I mean, by by elimination, you can maybe come up with C, but a lot of times, even these rare diagnoses, you're like, okay, let me learn about it. And you're probably not going to miss it again because this is very, very like weird symptomology. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay.